From Iowa caucuses to the courtroom, former President Donald Trump is fresh off of his victory in Iowa and now in New York City, where jury selection is underway in a case that will decide how much additional money Trump will have to pay Jeannie Carroll. Carroll won a defamation lawsuit against the former president last May. Morgan Norwood has that story. Just hours after winning the Iowa caucuses, former President Donald Trump was in a courtroom, arriving in New York City where a jury will decide how much he will pay E. Jean Carroll in her defamation lawsuit. Trump twisted and turned in his seat as prospective jurors answered questions about their political affiliations, voting habits, campaign donations, any experience with sexual assault, and familiarity with E. Jean Carroll's column in Elle magazine. Three dismissed after admitting they could not be fair. After hours of questioning, the nine-person panel seated this afternoon. Another jury had already decided in a separate trial last year that Trump is liable for sexually assaulting Carol in the dressing room of a Manhattan department store in the 90s and that he defamed her in a 2022 social media post by calling her allegations a hoax and a lie, saying this woman is not my type. The judge reminding the court saying this trial is limited to the issue of the money. Trump has denied all wrongdoing and has said he doesn't know who Carol is. He was seated directly behind her and her counsel in the courtroom. His team at one point sparring with the judge, asking to postpone the trial so that Trump can attend his mother-in-law's funeral, to which the judge denied. And Trump is set to travel to New Hampshire later today. This year, though, he's expected to split his time between the courtroom and the campaign trail. Reminder, he faces 91 felony counts and multiple legal battles. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. An alleged New York serial killer pleading not guilty to a fourth murder charge in connection to the Gilgo Beach murders. Investigators say a DNA test linked Rex Hurman to a hair found on a belt used to strangle that fourth victim. Hurman's ple pleaded not guilty in the other three murder charges he's facing. The remains of all four women killed were discovered along a stretch of Long Island's Gilgo Beach back in 2010. Hurman will remain in custody, is set to be back in court next month. Americans are spending less and could figure out a way to pull back even more. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York reports the median increase in monthly household spending slowed to just over 5% last month. That's down about a half a percent from August and 2.5% from December 2022. It is the lowest rating since April of 21. Consumers surveyed say they will shell out on everyday essentials, but they're trying to cut back on unnecessary spending. JetBlue Airlines, $3.8 billion buyout of Spirit Airlines has been blocked. JetBlue argues the merger would make the airline a stronger competitor against the top airlines. The Justice Department sued to block the merger out of fears it would drive up ticket prices. Federal judge agreed, saying the deal would eliminate the nation's biggest low-cost airline and reduce competition. To other consumer news now, Costco cracking down on membership sharing. The company will soon test a new system that requires shoppers to scan their membership cards before entering the store. Costco has also started asking for membership cards and photo IDs at self-checkout stations. In a statement, the company called it unfair for non-members to receive the same benefits as paid members. They say the membership model is critical to the company's goal to offset expenses to keep the prices inside that store low. Three years after buying Drizzly for $1.1 billion, Uber is shutting it down. The alcohol delivery service operated as a standalone app and will now be integrated into Uber Eats. An Uber spokesperson says the move will help the company focus on its core strategy of helping customers get almost anything they need on a single app. Drizzly will operate through the end of March before transitioning its services into Uber Eats. Millions of Americans have trouble hearing, but so many of them don't want to wear hearing aids. ABC's Melissa Adon tells us why this serious issue often goes untreated. Hearing loss is a huge problem in the United States. Researchers at Johns Hopkins found that two thirds of adults over the age of 71 have some degree of hearing loss. Hearing loss was more common in white men, people of lower income, and people with a lower education level. Studies are finding that hearing loss leads to dementia, which makes it even more important to treat. 
but only 29% of people who have hearing loss actually use a hearing aid. African Americans, Hispanics, and people with low income are even less likely to use hearing aids. Hearing aids are now available over the counter, which could make them more accessible. Talk to your doctor if you're struggling to hear and think you could benefit from hearing aids. With this Medical Minute, I'm Melissa Don. A winter storm system has forced millions of people to take cover from Texas all the way to the Northeast. We detail the damage next, right here on the News at 6. Dangerous winter weather sweeping across the country, putting more than 180 million Americans on alert. Parts of the South under extreme cold warnings. While the Northeast gets hit with heavy snow and ice, ABC's Tim Pulliam takes a look. In the nation's capital, all fun and games along the National Mall as people enjoy this latest blast of winter. It's a lot of fun. I've been waiting a long time. D.C. hit with more than three inches of snow, putting an end to the city's snow drought. But across the country, from the northeast to the midwest, the conditions proving to be dangerous. I went really, really slow. But when it's skit, I get out of control. His car striking two men on foot. One of them a police officer responding to a previous crash. Both taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Right now, more than 180 million Americans under alert for bone-chilling temperatures, snow, and ice. Roads in northern New Jersey covered in snow. ABC's Trevor Alt is there. But in the road crews are already at work pretty early today. We got all the salt here, and you can actually see the crews as they're in motion. They're loading up the salt trucks. Near Cedar Rapids, Iowa, several box trucks crashing along major highways. Record snow and ice deep freezing parts of the south. Really bad. Yeah, do not drive. Over the weekend, watch as this pool filter explodes from the cold temps in Allen, Texas, as this homeowner turns away. In Alabama, this truck swerves and crashes. More than 300 Alabama National Guardsmen working to free stranded drivers. In the Midwest, wind chills falling as low as 40 degrees below zero. Out West, avalanche warnings in effect for the Colorado Rockies. Authorities in Wyoming say a skier died in an avalanche, the third avalanche death this month in the U.S. The storm also causing massive flight delays and cancellations. And forecasters are tracking a new storm here out west that could bring more winter weather to the East Coast by Friday. Tim Pulliam, ABC News, Los Angeles. Geez, some close calls in that story. It makes you feel lucky that our precipitation is out of here. We I, just got to deal with the cold. I was going to say, it makes you feel like, ah, 32 is not so bad. 32 yeah. and dry, not so bad compared to other parts of the country. Yeah, but we still feel it. Yeah, <laughs> right? we're still feeling it, still feeling the cold. Uh, yeah, I was actually just ice fishing just a couple of days ago in northern Minnesota, and me and my friends landed in San Antonio. We're like, we went from super cold to very cold. Like, how, you know, you got off the plane thinking, it's not that much warmer here. Brief warm up tomorrow, or on Thursday, I should say, a brief warm up on Thursday. Windy and cool Friday, promising rain chances to talk about. And an interesting phenomena that's related to something we've seen around here recently that I came across while in the Great White North. I'll show you in a little bit. A family of six having to stay with other family members after the attic of their home caught fire. Firefighters say this was an electrical issue that sparked the flames. Crews responded to the home around 10 last night. They were able to put it out pretty quickly. Thankfully, no injuries reported and damage to the house is estimated to be at around $20,000. The Bear County Fire Marshal investigating a different fire that damaged five storage units this morning happened at a facility in the 4500 block of Texas Palm Drive on the northeast side. Officials say a man was living in one of those units. He suffered burns. His car also damaged the storage company working on notifying the customers whose storage units were damaged in the fire. A local nonprofit is doing everything they can to help homeless people deal with a severe cold snap. Communities Under the Bridge is giving those experiencing homelessness a warm place to stay and some hot meals. If you want to learn more or even get involved in this effort, we have a link to the nonprofit on our website at ksat.com. And that's your 60 second recap. All right, let's talk about weather right now. It certainly <sighs> got a lot of people's attention, at least for the next 36 hours or so until or until the next front comes through, Adam. Yeah, well, we have a bit of an up and down roller coaster ride ahead of us and 
Tonight's going to be the coldest point tonight and tomorrow morning. A brief warm up, then another cold front gives us a brief hard freeze again as we get toward the end of the work week. So we'll get to the that in a moment. We talked about it a bit earlier. We're getting into the details, but this is a view that we've seen on some of our waterways around town. This was posted to KSAC Connect. This is Calaveras Lake, and I'm going to zoom in. You see the steam coming off of it because of the very cold air over the relatively warm water. I mean, we're talking temperatures in the teens and 20s, but the water temperature is much warmer than that, probably in the 50s or 60s. So I thought of this because I came across this the first time ice fishing just a couple of days ago. We poked our holes, well, drilled the holes in the ice, and once we got the tent over them, I realized the holes were actually steaming because there was no wind inside our tent, air temperatures down near zero, and then the water temperature of about 32, we actually had some steam coming from the ice holes, which is actually something I have never experienced before while out ice fishing, but similar to what we see even in our neck of the woods of just, you know, the cold air over the relatively warm water. Same concept. Snow coverage right now across the nation, much higher than it was a few weeks ago because of this cold outbreak and of course some precipitation up north with it. So now 55% snow coverage across the lower 48. Some of that trying to creep into northeast Texas there, but not a whole lot uh, associated with the Lone Star State when it comes to any frozen precipitation right now. We're happy with that. Thankfully, we don't have any icing scenarios in the forecast. It's going to be very cold tomorrow but the roadways will be just fine. Here's the big picture and it's quiet up and down the middle section of the country. There is a system moving into the western US. Now, sometimes these drop in and push our way. This one won't, but another one on its heels will. That passes to our north. We have a lot of sunshine for several days. Then we see another dip in the upper level flow off to our west, and that's going to increase our rain chances by early next week, particularly on Monday, I think we'll wake up to areas of rain. Late Sunday, a few isolated showers at 20%. Monday, we're up to 60%. And then Tuesday, at 30% for rain chances. So Monday's what we're honing in on. That's what we're focusing on for the rain chances. Today, temperature-wise, we started at 19. Then we made it up to 36. At least we made it above freezing. 40, that was the high in Hondo and Del Rio. 41, Catula. New Braunfels topped out at 37. Rock Springs, Kerrville, only 32 degrees for high temperatures there. Right now we're at 33, already on the downswing, of course. And tomorrow morning, Rio Medina at 10. Bandera, 8. 12 in Bernie and Bulverde and Timberwood Park. Around San Antonio, between 14 and 16 degrees for the morning low temperature. Very cold in the morning, but at least we'll have a calm wind. No wind chill to worry about. That's a bonus here. If it gets as cold, at least we won't be talking the bitter wind chills, just air temperatures. And then sunny and near 40 by noon, 45. The high temperature tomorrow, that's 48 Poteet and Divine, 43 in Bulverde and Holotus, and 46 for the high temperature in Converse. Now, notice how we warm up a little bit. Thursday, we're up to 68, but keep in mind, our mornings are going to stay near freezing or even below freezing all the way through the weekend. So don't get too aggressive in putting those plants outside, say Thursday afternoon when we're near 70 because temperatures fall back to freezing for Friday morning and then a hard freeze actually by Saturday morning. And I do want to point out with that temperature downswing on Friday, it's going to be windy. Another windy front with gusts up to 40 miles per hour. All right. Thank you, Adam. Kentucky in space when we come back. In the buzz today, Lexington, Kentucky is trying to expand its tourism outreach to be out of this world. The city created an extraterrestrial <laughs> guide to the city, which includes some pictures of local landmarks and the molecular structure of water and bourbon. Yeah, they're really want to <laughs> spread the word after a blessing from the FAA Lexington beamed the message to some Earth sized planets 40 light years away. They also sent out an audio recording of some local blues artists and a quote saying come to Lexington. We have horses and bourbon. Just don't eat us. <laughs>
Staying in the so south, far, if, you, if you've ever stayed at the Peabody Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee, you probably recognize these ducks. The famous Peabody marching ducks waddle through the hotel or the snow outside of the hotel you see here. They live in a special residence on the top floor. Yeah, as you can see, the winter blast brought snow into town, forcing the birds to march from their penthouse palace to the warm indoors. Four inches of snow fell on the roof, and the ducks will stay inside until it all thaws out. Birds of a feather march together. Waddle together. Yeah. Winter Wonderland revelers in Washington, D.C. took full advantage of the frigid temperatures and snow that fell over the last few days. This massive snowball fight was organized by the Washington, D.C. Snowball Fight Association. I want to join. The association tends to name the fights to this one, the Battle of Snopenheimer. That's in reference to last summer's big hit movie, Oppenheimer. Okay. Finally, in Florida today, another blast off for SpaceX. The Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Base. 23 satellites launched into space for the Starlink Internet System, the SpaceX initiative to get high speed Internet to anywhere in the world. Those satellites officially in orbit as of this morning. You didn't really like the Snowfenheimer thing, did you? I could tell it wasn't really. No. Naming that snow fight to snow. Yeah, I think they could have done better. Yeah, but tell. I'm not a member of the D.C. Snowball Fight Association. No. Maybe but you could year. be. We'll, <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Cooling off quickly this evening. 31 right now. You see that in the lower part of your screen. By 9 o'clock, we're at 20, 27. 20 at 1 a.m. And then notice by 7 a.m. tomorrow, we're at 16 degrees. Even cooler in some outlying areas. And morning temperatures will be right around or below freezing all the way through this weekend. So keep that in mind. Now, afternoons will be up and down. 45 tomorrow, near 70 by Thursday, then back down again. 16. Stay warm. No joke. Thanks for watching. See you at 10.